have a wee, uh, like, quirk you do? Huh? A wee, like, if you started doing that, is that a thing you started doing? Did I do it? You're like, ro- roll, roll. <laughs> Is that a thing you do? Um, now? But do you know? Do you know what happened? <laughs> Conspiracy people will be like, he's new Illuminati. He's trying to give out signals during yeah. tea with me. This Sam Smith. <laughs> yeah. But you have all the features of somebody that you could believe is a lizard. You have the long tongue with points and long fingers and all. So people be like, look at him and all. Yeah. And then because you do that wee weird thing, you would be like, oh, it's got lizard eyes. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. Forget lizard. Only pointy ears too, like Nosferatu. We were talking about toads. Uh huh. And you said toadfish from neighbours. Yeah. This is, all, this is on the pod, by the way. Yeah. Um, we'll do the ad reads in a second. Did the waterfront? Yes. In Belfast? Yes. It was the whole, it was the neighbour's cast. Oh, well, that yeah. makes more sense. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It wasn't just him <laughs> doing a fucking Q&A. Yeah. Just with his brother Stonefish. That'd be, yeah. <laughs> that'd be great. I'd love it. Were they, were they, so it was a neighbour's... Um, yeah. Like a reunion kind of thing? Or uh, Amazon have bought the rights to it, I think, because it was so successful and it's... Um, what, what do you call that thing? When you, when you get like 100,000 signatures? Petition. Petition. Yeah, it went so well. Why are you smirking? <laughs> because, and if we've said the front podcast, you don't know words. I don't know any words. <laughs> I don't know any words. I really don't. My bread and butter is words. I, I work more with words than everybody else. You're like you're like a permanent game show host 24-7. Yeah. You're like, come on, signatures. Under th- if I had not signatures, I'd have a petition. <laughs> pass. Just everything's pass with me. Um... Yeah, you're you know more, more word. You're one of the people who knows more words than anyone I know. That's nice, thank you. You and, you and Karen Bartlett know a lot of words. Yeah, I'd say I know on a on a spectrum. Mm, I'd say certainly. it goes. I'd say <laughs> <laughs> I'd say it goes. You, uh-huh. me, oh, fuck off. You. Yeah. Well, I know As more words than you. With all comedians or just us? Still all comedians. <laughs> <laughs> like you, you put me below Fiona. Oh, it's 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 a it's it's a constant competition. I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I can Your conversations that. in the house must be riveting. Fuck no. Off, <laughs> you shouldn't talk about chips at all, would you? What? About what? Um, <laughs> we <laughs> we are sponsored oh. by... Welcome to this episode of the Teams Me Podcast with me, Shane Todd. Don't put the oh, ad man. thing up on the screen so I can see it because I don't know some of the info. Mm. We... Um, uh, talk about Patreon. Talk about Patreon. Okay, Dan, but before we talk about that, before we talk about that, somebody was just talking about you. Oh, no. I just went to see Coco, obviously. Dave said, "You said I look. You look German. like you look like you're a stormtrooper from the Nazis." Which you know what you can say what you want about the Nazis. They weren't nice people, but they <laughs> oh, <made> controversial <laughs> opinion. <laughs> they looked great when they were doing it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Hugo Boss gear, nice yes. haircuts, right? You know, Quiff so Richard. I like it. Skin feeds. Quiff Richard. Yeah. Um, yeah. But Dan, and skin lamps and skin pillows. You know, they, they did the works. The Nazis were. They love to touch his skin, this voice. <laughs> mm. Dan, you look like you look like in Nazi times. You look yeah. like you would have been like one of the Nazi guys, but like ordering people to go do things. Like you just be in a hut. You know, you know what? Like uh, the one Nazi I look like, you know, Hermann Göring, because yeah. he was fat, but he was also the most stylish. You know right. what I mean, he was like Sam Smith of the Nazis. Right. <laughs> like everyone was like, he's fat, he shouldn't be dressed like that. But he's like, that's me. Right. No, that's the way it is. Um, Dan, I just got my haircut and Coco said he hasn't seen, he, ha- he said, I haven't seen your red haired friend in quite a while. <laughs> and I said, do you mean Dan? He said, yes. I said, he said, what did I do? And I said, did you talk to him when you were cutting his hair? He said, yeah. I went, there's your mistake. 100%, yeah. Is that why you genuinely haven't gone back? Generally, yeah. If you ask again, just tell them growing it out. I said, I said, I, can you please go on it? I'd love to see that. Uh, you'd be like Mick Hucknall. I am. Um, uh-huh. More like Dick Hucknall. <laughs> <laughs> you think we found that? <laughs> <laughs> see, when you laugh like that, you yeah. changed race for oh. a second. <laughs> <laughs> Woo, I'm, I'm, I don't know what. I, in fact, I need to take a headache tablet. That's what's wrong with me today. Sean, will you do a Ooh. chat in a barber's? Or you do not like you do I not like it too? I prefer not to. Right. I prefer not to. I prefer to just sit there and just sort of just daze, do you know what I mean? Just Do you go to this <laughs> <laughs> What are you laughing? I just don't know why I think it's funny that you go into a traps when you're <laughs> <laughs> and then you start cutting around. You. Sean gets a jerk up by Darren Brown. <laughs> <laughs> He's gonna say 
they have to keep like pushing my head forward do you ever get that you're getting your t- they're just fucking coming to push your head to the side Dave um, you that. Dave you go, you go to Mikey to get your yeah, haircut but it's, it's how long does that take 48 seconds no like it takes it's very short and what I've noticed he's starting to do now yeah cut because it's the classic bit when you're going bald is you still get the back and sides growing so he'll trim the back and sides and then he'll like take a wee bit of it and go hmm. like salt by over my head to make it look like he's doing something at the front right. you know he'll be like ah oh, what's uh? yeah and then he's like you should shave it and I went never never Becca because we were talking about that before huh? if you were going bald do you not think we're at an age where if we started to lose our hair you'd, you'd be okay but look we've got this far do you know what I mean we're two yeah. old guys with full head of hair both mid 30s aren't we like you're not mid 30s I'm mid 30s I no you're not you're 40 until December 40 in December are you yeah yeah so that's nuts now. you're Fine. one of the oldest guys I know Benjamin Button apart from my dad <laughs> I'm older than my dad <laughs> <laughs> that's how fucking from old Lurgan. I am <laughs> <laughs> um, Patreon patreon.com slash tea with me podcast we do the bonus podcast on a Friday the uh, Waterfront show was on there in its entirety if you want to sit down and watch that Dave and Kieran Bartlett one of the best nights in comedy I've ever been involved in um, everyone was emotional at the end of it it was all nice and people were sending me nice messages and all um, what else is on there Dan? the mock blame never mind the mock blame whatever Kieran called it the panel show that we did in the limelight mm. which is brilliant Kieran's like guys we're, this is maybe for TV everyone's in agreement after seeing it it is not for TV <laughs> it is not for any TV ever, but enjoy that up it's vulgar, there. Vulgar, is it? It's vulgar. Do you know why? If it was for TV, it would be watered down completely, and it loses Massively. everything. Do you know what I mean? Massively. I think it's be- this the be- the best thing to do is to keep putting these on Patreon. You'd have like like a pa- like Patty on. It's like that's fucking nuts. You'd have Patty being like, "That's friggin' <laughs> bananas." Yeah. Like it just wouldn't. <laughs> but uh, shout out to Michael Foster, unbelievable edit job on it. Mm. Unbelievable. Really good work. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Patreon.com slash TV Me Podcast. Huh? It's on, but I can see just. Uh, it's a Jens Causeway or something? Yeah. No, it isn't. It's like it? flicking it's between just landscapes. A rock. There's no. It's Dwayne the, Johnson. The basalt formation of the. <laughs> that was decent. Nice. See, and you did that wee thing where you, you make a joke and you go. Like, well, look in the distance? Like, that was, that was good. I am actually just looking for the ad rates. You can't pat your own back. Pardon? No, it nope. hasn't come up yet, Dan. You know what else we knows? Do that we face. Do that we face again. You could do a wee bit of Botox. We crows fighting this. I know I have that baby, but if I don't you want, mind. I know someone can sort you out. Yeah, your wife does aesthetics, I get it. No. But no, why no, can she not no, sort no, no. you out? Because you have a ledge above your yeah, nose. Because I have too much meat. I have the opposite of you. I have too much meat in my hair. Yeah. Mine's like an overstuffed sausage. There's too much meat and it's just can going you, down here. Could we do a meat transplant? Yeah, that, that would be a great... I'll put that on Patreon I'll shave my head because I need to, to cut the meat out and then you put it into your face you were in a band in school called Meat Transplant Meat Transplant yeah <laughs> did you ever do a school talent show never mind I will ask you in a second we're sponsored by Calm do you have anxious thoughts <laughs> are you restless at night or do you just not feel like your best self Dave kind of did a laugh there that was like huh, but also was a kind of sad laugh of like yes I do have anxious thoughts um Making sure we feel like our best selves should be a top priority. By spending a few minutes with Calm every day, you can be sure you're taking the necessary time to prioritize yourself, which is something I love to do. Calm is an app that offers guided meditations, sleep stories, relaxing music tracks, and daily movement sessions. Guys, over 100 million people in the world use this thing. If you've never meditated before, you'll get all the support you need, and you can learn how to do it on it, because I've tried meditating before and been like, that was unreal, but I was just asleep. You can improve your focus, you can uplift your mood. Stress less, sleep more, live a happier, healthier life. For listeners of the show, by the way, Cam is actually unbelievable. Uh, Stephen Fry does a wee sleep story about the lavender fields of France, and I can't sleep without it, to the point where one day my phone wasn't working, so I had to get him to just come and read it, just come and be with me. For listeners of the show, Cam's offering an exclusive offer of 40% off a Cam premium membership. Cam.com slash T with me. You go to Cam, C A L M, Cam. C A L L M, Calm, as in Calm, not Cam, not C A M. Calm, Calum Best does, it, does not do a sleep story on it. Don't go to CalumBest.com. Calum Second Best. <laughs> Slash T with me, 40% off unlimited access to Cam's entire library. Uh, the link's in the description for all these. We're also sponsored by Beer52. Now, I don't know where these guys have been, but I remember they were, Dave, they were sponsoring Boytown about 94 years ago. Mm. 
Remember this? No. Nope. In the late 80s? Nope. We, we had a thing on Pier 52. Yeah, I think I set that up when I was at Audio Boom. That's right. I uh, used to deal with Dan. Do you know this? No. Nope. I When we were in Boytown, I used to deal with a guy called Dan Quick from Audio Boom. Uh-huh. And then when Dan started working at BBC Northern Ireland, I said, wait a second. Are you Dan Quick from Audio Boom? He said, yes. Uh-huh. Right. Thought Very you'd be more blown yeah. away by that. Wow. Well. <laughs> would you like free beers? Of course you would. That's what Beer 52 are offering you. Dan, do they want me to shout that? That's what they're offering you. Go to beer52.com slash T and cover the meagre postage cost of five ninety five to claim your free case. Each month, what these guys do is send out a case of unique and varied beers from different parts of the world. China. Yes. Australia. Yes. Germany. Yes. Belgium. Shut up, hurry up, because you're on the places. Sudan. Yes. <laughs> With their ever insightful Ferment magazine, you can learn about the breweries, regions and the wonderful world of beer while you're enjoying a phenomenal section of fresh and tasty craft ales. In the last 10 years, they've been to 40 different countries, spanning five different continents. Uh, We're talking, yes, USA, Australia, Germany, even North Korea. Were you looking at that? That's mental. I was like, you guys know your craft ales. Yeah. The showcase, <laughs> the incredible. Uh, How thick am I? I've gone below you in the awards thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Not for long. Though. They, they also, <laughs> they also showcase the incredible range of breweries closer to home. Northern Monk, Cloudwater, and Belfast uh, Boundary have all featured. If, if you're not in the dark beer, you can choose a light case. Uh, there's also a couple of snacks to enjoy with your beer as well. And even after all that, you're not satisfied, you can pause or cancel at any time. Beer52.com slash T to get your free case now. Beer52.com slash T. Dave, guess, uh, the link's all in the description. Yes. I'm going to lift out a can here. Uh-huh. If you guess what it is, like where, if you guess where it's from okay. or what it is, I'll down it. Right, okay. And I can't have Well, it's beer. So, so that's one nil. So let me see. No. you got to guess. No? Yeah. Just guess uh, where it's from. Oh, well, can we see it? No. Yeah, okay. But There. <laughs> um, that is from Bada Bing Bong, the Netherlands. Oh, no, Sean, you want to have a guess? Estonia? No, Spain. Uh, Cerdos <laughs> Voladores. There's a wee pig on it. Yeah, nice. That's you and your summer holidays. It is all right. <laughs> nice. I'm sure that's lovely. There's wee pigs on it. No. Daft Spunk. Um, we've got snacks. What snacks have you got Spanish there? Spanish lager. I think this might all be Spanish. Yeah. Cerveza. Uh, yeah. See, it bass have, beer. Bass yeah, beer. Mate. Have when was the time you had a bass beer? When I was in the bath. Do they have uh, any nice wee, like... With Chris Eubank? With, uh, <laughs> do they have any nice wee, uh, like, chorizo sausages or something? Pardon? Like chorizo sausage in there? See, Tony does this too. Spanish. See if you go for lunch. Yeah. See if you go for lunch, he'll say chorizo. What's the other thing you say as well? Or is it chorizo? Run, walking with jocks. Barcelona, some people say yeah. too. Bartha, he would do that. But do you yeah. remember Guillaume Balahe on uh, <laughs> on Sky Sports? And he would be chatting about the La Liga. So he'd be saying stuff like, it was a great performance from Xavi and Iesta. And he passed the ball to Messi. And it's a fantastic performance from Barcelona. And yeah. it was like, everything was normal until he said Barcelona. Bartha, and you're like, why? Just well, don't. I think when David Beckham signed for Real Madrid, everyone from here would say, for a while, was saying Real Madrid. There was that. No. I hate that, <laughs> yes. Real Madrid. Real Madrid. <laughs> That's not how it works. It's Barcelona. <laughs> and you know who I support? Who? Manchester United. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it was just that your mate had a lisp. <laughs> See, Beckham's calling Real Madrid. Yeah, because he was a season ticket holder at Lithburn Distillery. So <laughs> maybe that is. Actually. Yeah. Maybe that's what it is. My guests today are Sean Hegarty and Dave Elliott. Two, um, two guys. Two, two guys. big hitters. Two big hitters, two big guys. I was say two big hitters or big shitters, but I have a small bum, so it doesn't work. How did you... He does. He actually does, does have he? a really yeah. small bum. Yeah, like, uh, like my, my actual anus is touching the seat right now. It's a bit, bit nice. But are your bum cheeks normal? Are they normal? No, no he doesn't have bum have cheeks. Have no like, bum you know cheeks. The way, you it's know so weird. Kieran doesn't have a bum either. You know the way you get women who, like, had, used to get those things in the 90s, those chicken fillets to pump up the bras? Yes. I could do with them for buttocks, like. Hmm. Right. I ain't got no buttocks. Babe. Would you think about going to Turkey and getting it done? Not now. No. No, Turkey's not. Like, I don't, I've not seen a lot of people going to Turkey, getting the teeth, getting the hair, and come back and going, that looks class. Yeah. You see it and you go, oh no. Sean, if you had to get one thing, like <laughs> cosmetic surgery, hair, tra- oh, you wouldn't get a hair transplant, but something like that, what would you What would you get? If a, if a, a Turkish uh, clinic rang you 
and went, listen, load of money, brand ambassador, but we've got a film, you're like getting something done, what would you get? <sighs> Probably a dick job. <laughs> 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 it's too big. It's far too big. Um, I just picture you on your own social media channels. <laughs> you look on a dick job? Yeah. <laughs> Not the bathroom of me. I says to Diona the other day in the car, we were driving in the car, and I says, um, I'm You should get of, a dick job. <laughs> <laughs> John half of mine, I says there. Um, I says, I'm thinking of doing a, a YouTube series where I like conquer all my phobias. Right. And she was like, <laughs> <laughs> for any audio listeners, Dave mind uh, uh, eating a bratwurst. Yeah, is that what yeah, I was eating, yeah, eating the baguette. <laughs> That's literally what I was getting to. <laughs> I swear to God. <laughs> what are, says what to are me, like, what are your what are phobias? some of your fears? I'd be interested. You're a complex guy. I, but see, the thing is, she says to me, "What are your fears?" And I go, "Blowjobs." Um, <laughs> but uh, but uh, g- genuinely, my fears are Dave. Talk to Sean about conquering fear. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> have you conquered the, fears before? That's the, no. Uh, that's the best way to to just come out, like isn't it? <laughs> well, I'm terrified of giving blowjobs. Oh, are you only way to get over to do it? Oh, yeah. What else? So what, what else? What are you scared of? What are you um, actually scared of? I think we talked about this last time I was on here. Did we not? I don't know. We might have. Um, bit of a fear of heights. Right. Yes. Um, we did. Fear of Catholics with money. <laughs> um, what are you worried they're gonna do? Just, you never know. Right. Mine's the same, you but never know. sans money. Like. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like a font. Yeah. What are you, <laughs> what are you scared of? You're definitely Terrified of heights. heights. Terrified of heights, yeah, mm. absolutely. I'm not too keen on like wee small underground holes now either. Nope. Were you I'm, before? No, but like I watched the thing about this guy. It was like, oh, I'm just, I found this hole. And he's like, I'm just going to go for a wee dive in it. I was like, don't do that, mate. You don't know Sorry, do you mean like cave dive? No, but like, it's just a wee hole. This guy's found a wee hole. And then I was watching Where? the thing about those guys. Where? Is it your OnlyFans? No, because... <laughs> but it was... Is it your wee hole? No, there's another guy. I'm not terrified of that. But there was a guy who... Hold on. Yeah. Who you went? Oh, I just like terrified this guy found yeah. this wee hole. And went to, but what, like, where? Like in a, a forest? Know, like, uh, like he was just in. It was just outside. And he just found a wee hole. <laughs> and then I saw... And then I got in the guys going in the holes. And then I saw this guy. He was digging a wee hole in the ice. And he was like, oh, yes. let's go. And he dug another wee hole and he went under. Yep. And then he came under out of the other hole. Then he went to Vietnam and was like, oh, these wee Vietnamese soldiers were like, like they're like toddler size. And they were just <laughs> going through the holes. And then he was like, I'm too big for these holes. And that the thought. Do you, are you getting confused with children? Me. I don't know. Well, the Vietnam War could have been kids. like, But it was t- just underground being tightly squeezed and not being able to move my arms. And that's, that's, that's a so hobby I, I don't get. It's like caves. Holes. Is that what yeah. it's called? Guys would just go into like underground cave networks. Yeah. I I don't get that. I don't see what the buzz is, even if that goes well. That's claustrophobia yeah. though, sure. Yeah. <coughs> Being in the coffin, I don't like the idea of either. Yeah. Yeah. So claustrophobic, but underground. Who's buzzing for that? No, but like some. A lot of your do. fears are things you would assume were fear. You're like, oh, being murdered would be. No, shit. but I'm not afraid of being murdered. That's fine, like, but it's just being. It's being not. Where would you like if you were publicly? If you're going to be publicly executed, JFK style. Where would you like? Do you want to go on Banger or would you want to go somewhere? No, more no, I wouldn't want to go to Banger. I want to go somewhere, shit. That right. like, w- like I wouldn't care if the people were all sad about it. Right, so right, probably right. Donald. Whack me there, you know. Be the fine. ice pole. Yeah, no, not the ice pole. There's kids there, you know. Probably, I know. I don't know where it's all just in the middle. Of, you know the road where all the traffic just bottlenecks every moment of every day. Just yeah, there. just do me there. Right, right, right. Do me there now. Um, we're not talking about the boxing because time has moved up. We we'll have oh, to. Goodness. I like the painting though. I gotta say that. That's oh yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah, went a bit mad with the red there, didn't he? With the blood, but I know I put that on. Did you? Yeah. <laughs> he gave me it without the blood, and then I added. I just added yeah. that. And what's it's it painted off? It's it's me assaulting Johnny Poe. I thought it was a guy like going up to the Johnny Jig statue in Hollywood, giving it a kiss. <laughs> <laughs> well, it could, if yeah. you like to think of that, it could yeah. be. It could so be that that art. That's the beauty of art. It's interpretive, isn't it? It's the yeah. before shot of the two people in Derry, do they touch each other's hand? Yes. Have you part. ever had fan art? Have you ever had yeah. anybody? When I did loads of Rodney stuff, I got loads because serious. Uh, yeah, see, when I did like um, the parties, the song parties, mm-hmm. it sort of had a whole new audience for me, and that's when I released the joke book and stuff, the kids' joke book, and I got like loads. I did a book tour around schools in in NA. And all the schools I went to, kids were handing me all photos and or, or all pictures Sorry, that they've done. All right, they're all me and stuff. <laughs> so I don't know why I said that. Uh, Uncle Sean's coming, he need a photo. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah so I've quite, I've quite a few things sort of rolled up. Did any of those go terribly wrong? Doing like 
appearances. Ah, they're all shit. Like they're all. Were well, they all shit? Ah, uh, yeah. It's like all describe to me. Kids. What? How did you think? Did you think you'd walk into the assembly and they'd all be like buzzing and? They all knew I was coming. So the thing was, I'll go to their school for free, right? And then, but the the, the premise is that I I would bring all my joke books. Don't yeah. make everyone pay. So I'm not. I'm not. I'm just. <laughs> and I would bring all my joke books, and then after I do like a twenty minute set where I do like sort of silly magic and just sort of jokes and stuff with them, then I would sell all the joke books to all the kids for like a favour each. Right. And because um, kids notoriously primary school kids carry oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah well they, they were told in advance do you know what I mean it was okay, sent out okay. in the newsletter or whatever this was like three or four months down the line right so I um, sold over like a thousand books so I was fucking delighted oh wow Five, gee yeah. nice yeah quick mass there for and me. were they were they like mm-hmm. were they into it yeah they loved it yeah I was signing them and stuff after and it was proper it, it was like if, if, if they were adults and uh, I was myself it would be in like a special would... school <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like specialising in literature yes, like a university yes, spe- like a, yeah English lit um, yeah, but good did, you didn't ever write your number on any of them did you, <laughs> no, you ever be like no. he's from the gladiators too weird. came to my school to do an appearance mm-hmm. and like he was almost knocking off Katie Price for a bit wasn't he was he oh, no that's sorry. Hunter that's Hunter sorry <coughs> oh I see yeah <laughs> was he oh, yeah no Hunter was she yeah. made him run up the travel later to her to her where Hunter Price sounds like a bargain hunter doesn't it <laughs> Hunter yeah. Price, yeah. Also, Hunter somebody Price. that would murder someone and get his rich dad a cover for it. Yeah, I was yeah. going to say, <laughs> I look like a billionaire son called Hunter Price. Hunter Price. <laughs> if I were to be Cravatinal, I'm Hunter Price. Yeah. <laughs> I've killed another. Yeah. Um, who came to your? Did anyone come to your school? The then? Cobra. Oh, from. Yeah. yeah. And I think he came with the Saracen. Oh, wow. Which, but nobody really liked the Saracen, but he was my favourite. So right. everyone was going over to Cobra because he was like, like it was weird because you let a gladiator out <laughs> in the school assembly place. Like, the only places you get those wee climbing frames and ropes are in school. The Cobra was like, yeah, straight up, like he was <laughs> wild. And Saracen was just hanging about there like a normal, like da probably being like, ah. Uh, I remember, you remember the wolf man from Gladiators, right? Yeah. He was like, if anyone doesn't remember Gladiators, he was like the villain, like the he like, he was like, uh, he, he wouldn't play by the rules and like, get this got into fights yeah. and stuff yes, with everybody. All like Panto. But was obviously just like a normal guy. He was at a some sort of like boat show in Bangor, right? There was like a boat show, like a family boat show, and the Wolfman was a special guest. And I remember he was like standing like right beside the crowd. No, and, and he, he must have been like in the boat, so he looked like he was having a great time. And then the the, the MC guy announced him. He's like, "Ladies and gentlemen, we have the Wolfman from Gladiators." And he in his head's like, "Well, we're not on Gladiators now," so he's like, he's smiling yeah. and all actually, and he's like. Boo! Everybody like turns <laughs> on the wolfman and they're like giving him shit. Like kids are booing him, people are throwing things. Everyone's like, fuck a wolfman. And I remember at a, as a child realizing the look of disappointment in his face of like, I'm a nice man away from the I Just love the thought of, of an eight year old kid shouting, fuck a wolfman. <laughs> <laughs> fuck away off. You know? Do you know um, that this didn't happen in school, right? But I used to work in a, like a leisure complex, I worked in the cinema part. And there was a bar and like a, a, a whole big sort of nightclub area and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Oh, what? Um, well, this separate, point? separate, yeah. You booked us a gig there once and there's a bowling alley? Aye, aye. Fucking class. That's class. Yeah, it's a good spot. I love like, a complex. It was a, it was a, it was a great job. Like, But um, one day Max Farnham was booked to do like a, Who's that? a public appearance from Brookside. Yeah. Do, do, you, do you remember Max? No. no. Do you remember Max? You, do, you threw Max Farnham out like Kim Jong-un. Like everyone would know. He's the Kim Jong Un. Max Farnham. <laughs> yeah, I swear to God. I bet you all know him the same. I'll Google him here. Yeah, well, was Max well. Farnham his Brookside name or his real name? His Brookside name, I'm going to say. Right, all right. There Steve, he is there. Stephen Pender played him. Yeah. Oh, I vaguely recognise him. Yeah, yeah. So he came for a, a public appearance in Centre Point, right? <laughs> right? And we were all working in the Centre. When, when did we chat roughly? You're talking. Mid 90s? 2003, maybe. Oh, okay. And my boss, who was a. Uh, a good lad like good crack me and him got on really well and he says to me would you go in and get me his autograph and I was all yeah sure and he gave me like this piece of paper and I went in and I I got to meet him and stuff and I was like could you sign this here for my friend and I signed it or he signed it and then I went back into the, the, the cinema part and my boss goes to me thanks very much and they took the paper off me and he unfolded it and it says on the side you're a shit actor and then if like a, an arrow that pointed to Max Farnham's signature and if he had have folded out the page when I was in there, it had bothered me. Was Max Farnham a bad boy? Like, would he have... 
He was kind of. He right. was. Yeah, he was, he was a bit sort of. There's some soap stars you just would like. Kane Ding, like you're not doing that to mm. Kane Dingle. Like. Not a bit. Or Steve McFadden or Phil Mitchell. Yes. Mm. Is it? Is is Mc, Is Phil Mitchell a real like hard man though? In real life? No, just like even in the soap. Well, no, like he's a big long term actor, so probably not. But yeah. in the soap, he's he's a thespian. Like. Yeah, but I mean, he's ugly, right? He's always pissed. But he bucks flat out, so I mean, he must be doing something right. You know, he must have a pipe on him or fucking I, I'm putting up. that in your head still. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's ugly. He's always pissed. He's bucking flat out. <laughs> R.I.P. Uh, yeah, R.I.P. the big man. But no, uh, he might, I bet he's a strange guy to meet in real life. Steve mm. McFadden's a bit. Yeah, because like. you'd only know him as Phil Mitchell. Yeah. That's a danger, I think, when an acting role like that. Like, the, you, yeah. people only think you're that character. Uh-huh. When you were... You were talking about doing Rodney, which was a character you you did. Did you did you ever have like did you have weird requests of like will you come and do this? And do you find from do- doing characters myself, sometimes I get weird about if I go to like an event, if I do an event as Mike McGoldrick, I before we do the event don't want to be in character, but I'm mm. wearing all the gear. Yeah, and people are coming up to me, so I get weirded out. Yeah, I used to do that, and I and then I was like, why didn't I come up with a character that wears a tuxedo or something? Because I was going to weddings, and I was wearing wee slashinger tracksuit <laughs> bottoms and a wee shitty maroon coloured t shirt, yeah. and I had it tucked in, and my hair was all shit, and I was doing the all this hair, and I was like, why, why did I come up with a character that has what's, all those? Traits? What's the worst thing you went to or like got booked for? Just loads of stuff, weddings, <laughs> and <laughs> just <laughs> most of it. I swear to God, it got to the point, and I was like, I can't do this anymore. It was like it was almost at the height of quite moderate sort of fame, and you know the money was coming in, and I got number one on Cool FM for Christmas, the Shazam chart, and I beat like Justin Bieber and Beyonce and all them. And second, it's I have a print out at home of the top ten in the charts and it's Rodney number one and then there's like Beyonce Justin Bieber you know yeah. Brandy and Monica and all this here I spoke to I took a weird <laughs> turn <laughs> Joe the boy is mine the remix yeah, yeah. one was, oh, it, was okay, it with okay. Beyonce don't know did Beyonce do something on that but it was that there and it was oh, like so a salty it was bitch arm, quite it got quite good and some people think like, Bieber's never got over it well what do you do so, so yeah but what do you mean you were like at the height of it and That's I was just like, I just not enjoying it anymore. Going to all these events, and I'm just dressed like a dickhead. Do you know what I mean? And then, as you say, as you go through the door, you feel like because you're in the costume, you have to be that character from yeah. before you go through the door. So you go in, and then it's like half an hour before you're on, and yep. you're speaking to somebody's granny out in the foyer, waiting to be brought in. Yes. But you have to do the Rodney character, you feel, because you're in character. That's a wor- the worst thing about corporate type things is when they want you to be there for a long time beforehand and you're trying to say, it'll be better for everyone if I yeah. just show up for the spot yeah. and then go. Like Kieran recently, I'm sure he talked about it in his own podcast, did he, about having to go for the dinner? Maybe not. I think you mentioned it was before Christmas. Was yeah, I'm not, I can't even remember who it's for, so I'll not mug him like that, but Kieran was, was booked to do stand-up at a corporate and he's like, yeah, yeah, I got a set together. And it says black tie. And he's like, all right. And he tried to, I think, negotiate out of it, as I would, of wearing black tie. And then they went, yeah, you have to come for the three-course dinner too. See, for me, no matter what it is, at that point, I'm out. Mm-hmm. Because you would just, when everyone's seeing you, having the, like the, yeah. the, the mystique of like the stand-ups yeah. away. 90% of corporate stuff that I get offered, it's and you can sit down and have your dinner and all of this yeah. too. And I'm like, not a bit. Yeah. You let me know when you need me. Yes. And I'll be there five minutes before to yeah, plug yeah. in my keyboard and away we go. Because that's the word. I did one for Christmas there at a, at a do and I had to have the dinner. But then I thought I'd be with people I knew. But I was just with these old guys. I'd, I'd never, so I sat and had you know nice chat with old guys about old man stuff. <laughs> and then they're like, David. And I was like, better go. And they're like, oh. And didn't know what I was doing. It was like, it's a strange. They didn't know you were the stand-up? No, they just thought I was a guy. Actually, one person was like, and what's your history with this club? And I was like, none just here and there is this the skin pad yeah it was a hockey club but it was a nice gig in the end do you know yeah, what i mean yeah. it was nice but i was nervous about it because uh, like, by the oh. way if they're looking at you being like what's your you 100 yeah. percent look like a former goalkeeper keeper, ice hockey keeper i don't <laughs> even play like i don't <laughs> even play on dry land if you, if you said you did nets for the giants a couple of years ago and then did your acl for yeah. the belief did tony just have a coffin fit yeah which Fuck is what so i would cool. have if i was in a confined space yeah 
<laughs> the, I, I remember I went to a wedding once as Rodney. Like I was booked, obviously. All right. <laughs> it was his own. Yeah. I, I, I pronounce you men away from there. Like to hear you've nothing to do with this. What the fuck are you doing here, you creep? Like, but the, so just to see, see when you go in, did you like? Would you be like with the trousers down and then be like, let's go business, trousers up into it, or would, you, would that I, be like your switch? I to, think at the start I would have had like the t-shirt, the t-shirt tucked out and yeah. the, the the bottoms down a wee bit and stuff, and then just the top of your shaft. And my hair kind of brushed over, and then when it was time to go, I would do the whole kind of right. Let's do this, like fucking Ali G kind of thing. But um, I, I did a wedding one time, and there was one man like. The, it, the thing is too when they book you they're like oh my my wife the bride fucking loves all your stuff or we both love all your stuff but the thing is the 200 guests probably yeah. half of them don't even know who you are yeah. do you know what i mean so you have that to put up with but you go in and you do a gig and i did a wedding once and it was before the meals and after that i was like never again and it was before the meals and i went out and the father of the bride was absolutely livid the whole time I was on. I was booked to do 20 minutes and he was starving because yeah. they'd kept them all day. Do you know what I mean? Right, right. And this was like six o'clock at night and they did all the speeches. The speeches all ran on half an hour late and then it was me before the dinners and the staff were all standing there like holding plates. Oh, no. But I was booked to do 20 minutes and I, this guy was just livid. So I just directed everything at him and just sort of slagged him the whole time, called him a starvo and all. Me, <laughs> fucking... <laughs> me and Butler did a... I'm sure I mentioned the podcast a couple of years ago, but me and Butler did a corporate in Oma, Silver Birch's Hotel. Did I, you know about no. this? The mother of the bride one, though? No. Nope. So we were doing a wedding, and when I was doing weddings, it was during COVID, but it was that time where you could have stand up at a wedding, but not music, so I ended up doing a load of them. Yeah. And um, I would always say, here, I'll, I'll, I'll not charge you anymore, but I'll bring someone to come do five minutes before me. It sets it up better for me. Uh, and Butler did a few. And I remember always asking, the only thing you say is, is there anything I, I you don't want me to talk about or what about swearing and all? And this, these ones went, it's all fine, do your usual thing. <laughs> so Butler goes on oh, first no. <laughs> and I'm like at the back of the room in a separate room, but I can see and hear the whole thing, but I'm like behind a wee bit of glass. And- um, Hannibal Lecter. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want the three course meal? I know, just some candy beans. <laughs> no, it's like McGabry, you talking to him through a wee telephone, are you? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> did the whole gang through the phone. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I'm standing by this class watching Butler go on stage, and there's that thing of like, yeah, the the bridal party like love it, but everyone else and older people are like, the fuck's this? Hmm. Well, we don't want, we don't need stand up. So Butler goes on. He, he says he's gonna like do like less of a, you know, he's not gonna, he's gonna take out some sex references and stuff like that. And he goes, my name's Aaron Butler, um, with the surname Butler, I got some bad nicknames growing up, like Bob Plug, mother of the bride, starts making a beeline for me with a face like thunder. She went, I can't believe this. She brings a hotel manager with her, I can't believe this. She went, he is up there, profanity. She went, he's, he's, t he, he's <laughs> 20 seconds in, he's talking about uh, butt plugs. And I was like, yeah, but that's not, he said the word butt yeah you know um and she went he's got to come off he's got to like you got to bring him you got to signal to him she went i'll just walk up and take a microphone off. and i was like if you do that i'm not i'm not going on and it was the most like awkward thing it's the worst. but whenever i went on butler was standing then where i was and she, she had obviously told everyone yeah. like this guy you know and i just remember butler was like the wolfman at the banger boat show yeah. <laughs> he was just standing <laughs> at the back and everyone was like, <laughs> <laughs> And the, the hotel, I remember the hotel manager, and the hotel managers are usually the soundest people in the yeah. building, because they're like, I don't know if it was a manager, it was, it was a member of staff, came up after, and I was expecting her to be like, what were they like, you know, and she's like, the iron, she's like, I'd suggest in the future, if you're doing things like this, you don't say things like, the word butt plug was used too many yeah. times, you know what I mean, she's <laughs> like, you and your butt plug, go home. Yeah. Um, but yeah, people just, at those corporate things, one in five are brilliant. But four are just yeah. Some okay. some I've done are have been crap. Oh, I just like normal gigs. gigs. Like, yeah, What's yeah, the worst you've probably, ever done? The worst, probably that first wedding one you got me to do. <laughs> I'm going COVID. back there soon. Don Adry Hotel. Yeah, for that was. There's one gig I've seen him where he, his soul died. It was we talk we joke about it's uh -huh. in the Empire. <laughs> yeah, um, and I have a photo of him. Oh, it's brilliant. And it, he's like perfect, like lighting, like profile lighting on him. He has a hand on his hip, hand on the microphone, and he's just looking down at the <laughs> and his soul is dead. Yeah. Um, yeah. But this was maybe worse. So Oh, that was really bad. There was one I did 
which was like a, a, a an aid of a of someone who had killed themselves. And I was like, yeah, no problem. But they were like, there's going to be a video, like a, a, a memory in memory of video. I did this one too. Didn't and they're like, oh, we have to move stuff about, so we're going to play the video now, and then you'll come on. And I was like, well, I suppose if I, if I must. And then they played the video. Everyone in the audience was crying. And then there's me going, fucking kids, eh? Who'd have them? And they were <laughs> yeah. just like, everyone was just in the audience crying. I was like, that's not fun. It's not a fun time. That's happened to me a few times. I, I don't know if I told you this. I did a gig for the Belfast Leisure Centres. And right before they brought me on, the guy goes, uh, we're now going to watch a wee clip here, folks, of all the people that we lost, all the members of staff we've lost in the past 12 months. <laughs> <laughs> and all you hear is... All around me are familiar faces. <laughs> Joe Janet with a wee fucking brush and all. Oh, and right. I was like, this is the worst. And then it goes, and now we're going to have a couple of yarns here. Please welcome your comedian, Sean Haggerty. Oh, my And God. you have to get up and just go. Yeah. yeah. Oh, oh, all right, guys. Yeah. <laughs> At least you are still here. Because there, so, there, the <laughs> there was once I was doing a gig and, and it was sponsored by a mental health charity. Okay. It wasn't Pips, but another one. And they went on. And Boo, and only Pips. Like, yeah. Boo, the rest. Only <laughs> but I'm so, joking. So <laughs> the, they were like, the ones running the gig were like, listen, can the representative from the charity come up and say a few words? And I went, yeah, absolutely. So she came up with like a sheet and it was just like this. That there are so many people have killed themselves in the last year. And it was all, oh, oh. and I went on and I thought, you know what? I can't just do normal. I was like, She's a bit dreary, isn't she? Like, I, and I got a laugh. Yeah. But after she was raging with me, she's like, you're making light of that. I'm like, well, what do you want me to do? Yeah. You know, go on and be like, well. Tim know. McGarry is brilliant at corporates because when the person from the company speaks at the start, Tim always comes on and goes, uh, what about, you know, John or whatever? He goes, he, he's available for funerals. <laughs> and it, it like always get always yeah. fucking kills at the start. Um, between now and the rest of the year, Sean, what have you... What are you? What are you going to be doing? And you, you're being a wee bit slick at this year too. Yeah, I'm a slick at cunt, aren't I? Oh. A what? What was that word? <laughs> <laughs> That's just not a way for me to speak. What was that word? I uh, am a slick at cunt, aren't I? Yeah. <laughs> like Dave Elliot, wee slick at bastard. You know, never heard that yeah. before. Surprise, surprise. <laughs> <laughs> never heard slick it. No, fucking never. Is that the wee thing from Toy Story? <laughs> Goes down the stairs, is it? <laughs> slick it does sound like someone would be mates with Voldemort, doesn't he? Yeah. Yeah. But no sleek, it's like cards to your chest, cloak and dagger. I, 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 I'd love to like get a, I don't know how you compile it, but like a list of words and see if you've heard them before. Dan, if you could get like five words together. <laughs> go for it. Not everyday words and just yes or no if you've heard them. Just go on the CBB's website. <laughs> <laughs> Note all them. Uh, I, this year, I, do you know what? I think I'm going to do a couple of solo shows. I've all, I, I hate doing solo shows for the sole reason that you have to like sell your soul online. Yeah, that's why and they call it a solo show, Sean. Solo shows, like it, like solo. it. Yeah, that's one word I've heard of. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, I think I'm just going to do a load of solo shows. I have a few sort of ideas with Radio Ulster at the minute too that are going in the right direction. Um, my, my joke book was meant to be out this Christmas, but it's been delayed till next year because we got an illustrator on board. I can't remember his name, but the last person he said yes to was J.K. Rowling. And we've just sold the book to Costco in America as well. It's being translated into like 15 different languages around the world. And it's a fucking big deal. Like it's really, really huge. What's but I haven't really about? spoke about it. Pardon? What's a book about? It's a children's first joke book. So oh, it's wow. like all like animal jokes and things like that there. Um, so quite fitting for my vocabulary. Do you know what I mean? Fits fucking perfectly. But yeah, that's great. Congratulations. Yeah, of course. Thank you. Yeah. 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 My fear I mean. about anything like that would be having loads of it in the house and it doesn't like sell and you have it mm -hmm. do you remember when i was doing mike mcgoldrick i tried to launch a brand of t-shirt <laughs> yes yes do you have one uh yes i tried to do a range of t-shirt called goose and cola right like gray right. goose and coke right goose and cola uh. nice logo decent name. i thought the name was okay and it was sort of like i was like i'll promo it in character so it'll be funny and like launched it got craig gilroy <laughs> post rolster in ireland uh, do like an ad for me and things like that and i ordered not that many, like 200 2, <laughs> like 200 <laughs> and probably sold three six really and there's 194 in my dad's house in a box still yeah you know what you should do you should go down to like the charity or something and give it out maybe do like a mission so go that'd be funny content go to like ukraine 
and give out goose and call t-shirts. Yeah, because that's what they need. That's what they need. But that would be hilarious. Oh, thank you. Everything is good. All good now. I'm actually you're watching. Be love them a Goldrick sure You know yourself, mate. <laughs> Imagine you know you're watching news and Zelensky's got one on. Yeah. Like that, you? I'm bloody chancer. <laughs> he's a comedian, isn't he? Uh, Zelensky? He was. I think yeah. he's a poet. He was, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And he good, was he? Well, he did this. I might be wrong. I've been wrong before. He uh. did this thing where he went, as a laugh, I'm going to run for president and then became the president. Yeah. Which. As part there was like Unreal. a show around it. He was an actor in a show, and in the show, he was he'd become prime minister or president as like fictional character. Stay far and then it really. <laughs> That's Max fucking Max <laughs> <laughs> That's <laughs> mental. Yeah, Unreal. that'd be like something you would do. I'm going to do accidentally this. become. Uh, I'm going to run minister. for the DUP. This <laughs> yeah. is the vlog. <laughs> <laughs> and the next thing you know, you're there beside Mervyn Story in a council meeting, like the fuck. <laughs> <laughs> oh bloody! I've done it this time. And I'm way more extreme <laughs> than yeah. any of them. <laughs> <laughs> but you, you would be like you're like a young, young DUP guy. Is it get a guy and you look at him and go, oh, he's the future, and they're worse than anyone? You know? Oh yeah. Oh, oh yeah. dear. But that's that is you in a nutshell. I should have done this, but I have them stuck here. Yeah. Do you think though half of us could could be politicians and better than what's out there? Joe, because I we're think, so I think your soul dies and you go into it with the right intentions and very quickly you probably realise I can't make any difference here compared to what I thought. Hmm. And I, I don't know. I think you gotta be a, yeah. I think because we're all so open minded and so hard to offend. Nah, we don't know. <laughs> uh, I know what you mean. Do you know what I mean? We, I think we could really. But well, I think it, it won't make sense. I think the likes of a prime minister or a first minister or whatever should be somebody who doesn't necessarily want to do it. Hmm. As in, it should be some man or woman who you go, you'd be unreal at this, and they're like, no, no, you, no, honestly, please do it for a bit, because someone who states their intention to want to do that must be a bit mental. To be like, mm. I should be running everything. You want to find someone who reluctantly uh, will do it. Yeah. So that's why. Makes sense. But what? Dave Elliott. <laughs> no. You've just become first <laughs> minister and a friend. I know. You know what? Like, but here they're just they're a bloody joke. But um, that's what, a hot take. What do you call your man? Like, I, <laughs> but you know what they should do here. Genuinely, I watched the Nolan show the other night, Nolan Live, and Source Eastwood was on from the Alliance Party, talking a lot of sense. Jim Astor was on. And he was just, just going, Jim, come on. But see if he did something like every so often went, like, you'd love yeah. it. You know, like, it would take you know, like, if someone else was speaking at him and he's going, can I be honest? Be like I think me and you shared it amongst ourselves, but um, he did a talk. It might have been in Trinity College in Dublin. It's one of the yeah. funniest things I've ever seen. He's like Jeff Ross, the Roastmaster. Yeah. He goes down and like he's mugging them. Yeah. Like he's fully being... He's hitting them with sectarian banter. There's Love 10 it. out of 10. Everyone yeah. in the room's like, fucking Jim's got us here. Yeah, he's running around calling people fiends and hunting. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. If, he, if he did that. Backstage, when I used to do warm-up for Nolan Life, you'd meet all the politicians uh -huh. backstage. <laughs> and there was very few of them. I w felt like you could have a... Because no you'd, you'd always end up in the green room when you, I'd done my bit at the start. But you had to stay to the end, which was weird. Even though it was live. Um, and I said that multiple times, but they said I still have to say. And I was like, well, I'm not going to... Imagine they, they need your opinion here on, on the <laughs> yeah. hard border. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I never had... I, I, there was very few of them, and I can't remember who, where I went, this is a normal person I'm talking to. They were either like robots or they were rude. Mm, I found a yeah. lot of them very rude. I think of all the jobs in comedy, doing warm-up for Nolan Live has to be up there with the worst, the worst thing you could do imaginable. So I did, I think it was six or ten shows it might have been ten good money the first one I this was maybe ten years ago nine ten years ago the first one I did you have to do 15 minutes at the start was unbelievable it was like a gig you know like we're talking about when you have a good corporate you go oh this feels like a gig yeah. first one was smashing and I had my own dressing room and I was like this is really good really and whoever was the guest was someone I liked it was like a band or something oh, this, I was is like, this, this is really cool Jim yeah. um <laughs> And then every one I did after was the worst thing I've ever done. It I fluked it one week, but people are there to talk about contentious issues and That's it, like, bereavements. Yeah. And, but the people in the first two rows are the people that are going to get up to talk. So it's people who are going to talk about 
you know getting shot there was a guy one week who had been like lost the use of his lower half because he'd been <laughs> had punishment beaten and I'm looking at him going ah oh, mate do you ever get it when you're dad someone writes he says someone's written on my wall and you go dad it's on Facebook it's not your real and he's trying to clean it off and you're going that's it and the guy's like mate I can't feel anything <laughs> at all it's not on the do his legs yeah. just <laughs> <laughs> he's like <laughs> did I tell you about the time I got offered to do it no one no I got offered to do it during Covid yeah, we so called. No way. Oh. So they're uh, yeah, no one. So they uh, they asked me that I want to moderate <laughs> the uh, the uh, the Zoom chat. So all the all the audience were on Zoom. So they're like, so what will you'll do? You'll come on. You'll do a wee bit on Zoom, and then you'll just if people are acting up, you'll go in and go stop at you. You know, I said with all due respect, no, thank you. Right. You know, thank you very much for the offer, but do you know who the wor- the the rudest guest I met was? Katie Hopkins. Shocker. But I no. She seems w- so sorry. See to me, it was a shocker <laughs> because I thought. She was like a panto villain. Yeah. I thought she was like, you know, someone who's shocking for the sake of it, and then yeah. you meet them and go, mm. it's a bit cringe, but they're trying to be shocking like and they're Trump. actually fairly normal, mm. like Trump might yeah. be. Um, she was just really. She said something that I found horrific backstage. Can you say it? It takes a lot. Yeah. Yeah, because she said it, not you. There was a guy. Here's a small place, right? Um, so I'm going to be careful, but there was a. There was a guy singing uh, for his brother who was, I don't know the condition, my apologies, but his brother was like, it might be locked, it might have been locked in. I think it was something like that, yeah. Um, And you remember this? Yes. Like there was a guy who was singing, forgive me, but like either an opera song or a love song beautifully. And he, he, he'd done a video at home where he was singing it to his brother and they invited him to come on the show and do it. And people loved it. It was great. Because wasn't that the thing of the brother, the only sort of thing they could get him to like respond or react to was his, was his brother singing. Right, singing. right. So I think that was the sort of... So it was a fucking lovely moment. And the guy was a brilliant singer and he was really nice. And she was the guest on. And we were standing backstage after she'd been on and when this was happening. So we are watching it back on a monitor. And... She she said she said something like this is a bit cheap mightn't have been the word but she said something that really undermined it and then she went like she watched it again she went like this to like me and a couple other people that she didn't know that were standing around she she looked at it and she was like and I was like you actually are horrible and it takes so much for me to be like that's out of order like yeah. you shouldn't say that. But like I, I've hated her ever since. Yeah, but you know what's one of those things I was thinking about a new bit today when I was in the shower. You've turned into Trump. And I said I was thinking about a new bit, and uh, <laughs> like the Godfather. It was oh no, because I got a cold. <laughs> but um, the bit was no, fake news. Huh? <laughs> All your references are wrong. But it was like see the phrase uh, if someone's talking about somebody and they say they say it like it is. Yeah, that just means they're a cunt. Like, yeah, that's yeah. Just, oh, he he's says he's not afraid to say it. No, and you're like, oh, who is it? Andre Tate? Ah, yeah, don't, don't. He don't says that we're all thinking. It's like, no, nobody, no. nobody thinks like that. You agree with him, dude? Someone has to no. say it. You know, it's like, no, they don't. And that's the thing with any Katy Perry. He's putting yeah. his head in that power yeah. pit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Katy Hopkins is the, is the example of that. And it's like she was, she was all right. Was it The Apprentice? She was yes. all sugar. And then she got caught and bucking someone on the field. Don't they all? Hmm. The thing is, though, what people don't realise, Joe, like Joe Public, is that they keep tweeting about her. See, when she's on TV and stuff. Oh, wow. That's what gets you on TV. See, if you have a guest on who trends every single time they're on, they're going to be on every single time because they bring an audience to that show. Yeah. So every time she's on, people are like, can't stand Hattie Hattie Hopkins. Why are we on Hattie Hopkins? That would have been a fucking better Uh, name for her. Uh, Hattie's a country. Yeah. But uh, it's like, don't mention her. Do you yeah. know what I mean? And she'll eventually go away because people will stop booking her. Yeah, yeah. People keep talking and talking and talking about her on social media. And she just explodes every single time she's on stuff. Mm-hmm. So so just stop talking about her and she'll eventually go away. Do you know what I mean? That's what happened to uh, Chlamydia. <laughs> Dan, have we got a list of words? Oh, I thought you forgot about that. Oh, no. You're like, yeah. shit. I've got five words I've chosen. Okay. Fuck's sake. Love the smirk. You're loving this. Uh, first one, onomatopoeia. Automatopoeia. I've I've heard of it. Okay. What what is what's the what are the rules here? What have I to do? Uh, I think you get a point if you've heard of it and a point if you know what it is. Automatopoeia. I've hundred percent heard of it. I just don't know what it is. Do you know what it is though? Is, is it? it? <laughs> fuck fuck everybody in this room. It's 
so it's a like a grammar thing so it's like it's something that sound it's something that sounds like something else is it a word that can be used to mean is that close it's at all word. it's a word but the word sounds like the meaning so uh -huh. buzz buzz yes. describes cough yeah. okay no. okay <laughs> what else <do> <laughs> uh, quantitative quantitative like when there's like a quantity of something like you know it's like that is so quantitative like <laughs> there, there are no loads of it <laughs> like when you look at an audience Whoa, backstage you're at a so gig and you're like that that's a quantitative audience out there do you know I mean there's loads of them do you think you're being contentive <laughs> <or attentive? laughs> sure I, if I'm on my way to a gig and go alright mate what's a crowd like and you go quantitative, quantitative. <laughs> I'll ask for more info you don't have to from now on <laughs> yeah, it's, it's to do with a number of people you can put a number on something there you go yeah. thank you very much we'll, we'll give you a thank so, you so yeah a full house is a quantum of audience yep. yeah uh, cosmonaut cosmonaut that sounds like something when somebody goes why are you not going tonight just cosmonaut, <laughs> <laughs> cosmonaut can't be fucked mate just do you know that one go be yourself cosmonaut uh -huh. don't know it never heard of it in my life never heard of yeah. it it's a Russian astronaut isn't it a Russian career yeah. I would say, I thought this was in English. Do you mean? Huh? <laughs> it's Russian for astronaut. Yeah, it's like what their equivalent of an astronaut no, is. It's a Russian like, astronaut. All yeah. oh, right. Uh, oh, Russia, it's like somebody's yeah. surname. No, like what should we call him? <laughs> Who's the first guy in space? Russian astronauts, Buzz Aldrin, are called cosmonauts. Oh, okay, right. Oh, yeah. There's not just a Gagarin. Guy Yuri Gagarin. Who's... Yeah, he was a cosmonaut. I nearly said Dimitri Karin, who was an old Chelsea, Chelsea goalkeeper. <laughs> yeah. Repartee. Repartee. Sounds French, but it's an English word. Repartee. It's like repartee. Um, repartee. That's what Shane does in the podcast. <laughs> yeah. Repartee with yeah. me. Yeah. Um, again, heard of it. Don't know what it means. I also, I thought it was reper repertoire. Is that what it is? No, it's repartee. No, no repartee. Is that singular for repertoire? <laughs> repartee? Not that I am aware of, no. No? You know no, what? I don't know. I don't even know what repartee means. A swift, witty reply. Oh. 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 Similar to retort, maybe? <laughs> this podcast full of repartees. Yeah. How do we yeah. not know that? One uh, more? Finally, demigog. Demigog. Oh. oh, fuck. I know what this one is, because I am one in many respects. Demigod. <laughs> demigog. Demigog. Yeah. Demigog? I've never heard of Usually it. Usually in a sentence without giving it away. What does demigog mean? <laughs> <laughs> demigog. Please, for the end of this clip, have him just going demigog and then have all the wee sums going around his head. That was so funny. It's the wee squirrel cycling yeah. like fuck. Demigog? I just say a leader who obtains power by impassioned appeals or emotions. So Trump, like when I'm first minister. <laughs> yeah. Wow, well, I enjoyed that. So that game massively backfired on you. Yeah, yeah. Didn't it? Oh no, but I said I'm I'm down there with you. Okay, okay. Yeah, in fact, I'm below. You know, I'm in the relegation zone. So. Um, much Should, like why don't we Leeds make United? a game show called Words? And we just go on and you do that for half an hour. Because that, that segment was like five words and lasted 20 minutes. So we could do Let me ask you this, seven right? words. What are, and we've probably talked about enough of them. Did you ever, like back in the day, have an idea for a TV show that you pitched that on reflection is the shittest thing of all time? Or you're like, why was I trying to get them to do that? Um, up until a couple of years ago, I got to the point where I just was making stuff going, what will get made? rather than what do I actually want to get made. Right, Whereas right. I feel like I'm in a different place now where now I turn things down willingly. I'm just like, no, don't want to be a part of it. Don't right. want anything to do with it. And take pride in that, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Whereas I used to just be, would you do this? Yeah. Would you do this? Yeah. Just at the hope that it would fucking benefit me or help me or be financial gain or whatever. Yeah. Um, so to answer your question, no, I can't think of anything offhand, but I, I now I'm in a position where I'm just like, I'll willingly turn stuff down whereas I never used to be able to do that which is a luxury do you know what I mean it's, oh, a, yeah, it's a great yeah. position to be in and I'm so grateful to be in that position I pitched some shit over the years What's, is yeah. there anything that stands out you go why did I think this was a good idea 
Um, there was something about twelve years ago. I think I pitched to NI Screen, which was a movie <laughs> that I wanted to be in, and it was something to do with like a financial fraud thing. And I wanted which you know a lot the, about. I wanted to be the lead in it, but I was probably nineteen at the time and looked fourteen. And I was like, yeah, I'm this guy. I've got two kids and all. And there was also I wanted to do. Oh, I wrote a thing. This is one of those things, right? <laughs> where I should stop myself from saying uh-huh. because you will relentlessly mug me about oh, this. But listen, start it. <laughs> <laughs> I for a while enjoyed the genre of cinema. That's like, uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh. like not like Lord of the Rings kind of stuff, but like. Lord of the Rings, Braveheart, like old type. You liked swords, swords. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I swear to God, <laughs> the sword genre. Yeah, <laughs> and I wrote a thing called, as in, like I wrote a couple of pages of it. I came up with a name out of nowhere oh. and went, "That's a movie," and it was called Demigog. <laughs> <laughs> it was called the Brooch of a Sodal. <laughs> and I then had to figure out what it would be about. What is a sodal? It was a place that I can <laughs> <laughs> And a brooch a like your granny would wear. Like a church. brooch. Oh right. <laughs> <laughs> I need to rewrite it. <laughs> yeah, okay, it's a brooch. Uh, right, okay. The brooch of a soda. So it was like it, in my head it was like this powerful thing that had been lost and they needed to find it and they had to go to a sodal. <laughs> Which is where? Oh, it was specified. Like, yes, yeah. Istanbul, formerly Istanbul. Um, is that's this a script or just an idea? It was a script. Do you think you could find it? Oh. I reckon I could find the document that maybe has a couple of pages. Uh, please, just get it and read it. If I, if I find it, we'll, we'll, I'll, I'll put it on Patreon. Like 100% bring it in and everyone reads it out, whoever's in the podcast. Right. You know I mean? started so many scripts like that mm. that like would never have a chance but that came from going to tech and they'd be like make a short film oh, instead no. of going well we're in a classroom here in Belfast we should make something about that you'd be like western in space mm. like you made the stupid or horror but that's what they always say write about what you know and when you're that age you haven't really experienced all that much across the board yeah. so you're like I want to write about the brooch yeah, of a solo. <laughs> the brooch of a solo. I mean, I'm a local young teenage stand up comedian in Belfast. The brooch of a solo. <laughs> it's not fit <laughs> at all. Uh, do a show, their next solo show. Was there yeah. anything, yeah. anything you remember writing? Uh, nothing that I'd ever look back on and go, oh, that was terrible. Sometimes I look back and go, that would never work. Yeah. But never go, like, what was I thinking? Yeah. Bits of stand up. I look oh, back yeah, on yeah, and go, yeah. oh, no, like, sometimes we things in my notes I look at and go, what? Why have I got this here? What am I trying to say? Yeah. But I can't think of any. I like, oh. like the brooch of a solo. Nothing's going to talk about <laughs> that. Call this week's episode the brooch of a solo. I had. How do you spell a solo? Speaking of words. I s o d l e. Pardon. I s o d l e. That's not how I pictured it being spelt at all. I s o d l e. But so I, I imagine it'd be a and a a solo. A solo. Yeah. If if that's yeah. a, if that's a deal breaker, I'll change it. Here's but, a wee game we can play. That coincides with the the five words. Yeah. What about a spelling bee? I think I'd be really really good at a, a spelling. Should bee. me and you do a spelling bee? Hundred percent. Right. Because you you would win if you. I did just it. spelled the soda wrong there, so I might. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you it's all he, places I've written in script. Do you say he'd yeah. be too good? Or yeah, he'd, he'd be too good. What are you at spelling? Yeah. W O D Y. I think he'd be good. We while you come up with some stuff. Um, why am I looking at you here? Oh. We filmed, I had an idea where I would, I think it was called like lunch, like fancy lunch oh, or wow. something. Do you know what it was called? It's definitely less adventurous than the brooch of a soda. <laughs> it was a, do- <laughs> let me buy you a coffee. It was a series, a real life documentary. We were going to go, a mini series, we were going to go and meet tourists. They were walking around Belfast and I'd go up to them and go, not planned at all. I go, uh, we're filming a thing. Can I buy you a coffee and just find out like, who you are mm. and you'd sit down for like five, over and you only had the time that you drank the coffees to be like where are you from and what are you doing over here and tell me a bit about yourself and we went into Belfast me you and Butler yeah. to film it like two cameras I was all mic'd up spent an hour trying to get people a cathedral court to talk to us not one person everyone's Hi. like no fuck off yeah 
I stopped making Rodney videos out in the street talking to the the people, just general public walking past, because it was impossible to get anyone to stop. Yeah. It's okay. The worst. But you, it'd be like you know those noted aroma ads. You just get a few mates in to do a turn. <laughs> You're like, oh, what do you want? To, oh, yeah, I'm, I have a sh- actually a show coming up here. Will yeah. you go right? Will you be qu- uh, spelling bee master? Sure. You go around the back and I think use, use Dan's mic. Me and you should try it against each other, and then he should try yeah, and tell us what yeah. the correct spell oh, is. Yeah, yeah, perfect, do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Let's do it like that's if I can do it. I might make a real dick of myself here. Here we go. First one. Who's going first? Um, Shane, go first. Should you do a penalty shootout style formation? Five each and okay. keep score. Yeah. Embarrassing. E M B A R. R A S I N G. No. Does it get moved over? Yeah. E M B A R A S S I N G. No. If you had a combined, you would have got to write two yeah. R's, two, two S's. Two R's, two S's. <sighs> that wasn't Barson. That was. <laughs> <laughs> Bequeath. Bequeath? Yeah. <laughs> Fucking hell. Nathan Carter's favourite singer. Uh, what? Be- bequeath? Yeah. Never heard of it. B E Q U. He's going to get it. E. He's going to get it. This could fuck me as a gamble. A T H. No. B E Q U E A T H. Correct. What? What? You've what? just like, been bequeathed. I've just bequeathed you this drink onto you. <laughs> Is yeah. that what it means? Yeah. Uh, let's go for mayonnaise. Ooh, that's a tricky one there, mayonnaise? Daniel. M A Y O N A I S E. <gasps> no. Incorrect. Fuck. I don't even have it. Like mayonnaise. M A Y O N N A I S E. Correct. Ah. One each. One each. Uh, I've got mayonnaise in my face. Yeah, well, not for the first time. <laughs> and not mayonnaise. Did you say you're not allowed mayonnaise? <laughs> no, I just don't. I don't I have it. Because you right. just so you can't eat it. You just don't like the taste. Yeah, oh, it's yeah. rotten. Vengeance. V e n g a n c e. Wrong. I no. <laughs> 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 wasn't even your goal, Mister. I will have my vengeance on you. <laughs> Sorry, that's right. V e n g. E A N C E. Correct. Are you two one up? Yeah. Fuck. Uh, is this the last one, I think? Yeah, this is the last one. Oh, no. Sovereign. Ooh, mister. Wait, who's going first? Shane this time. Uh, he went first last yeah. time. Last two times? Yeah. S O V E R E A G N. That is correct. Oh, no. Oh, You've done no. him. You've done him. So now you are. You're the wordsmith. And you are oh, no. duh, <laughs> stupid. FSS. <laughs> um, thanks for that, Dan. Fix that next time. Make it fixed. Can you um, spell fix? <laughs> <laughs> no. P H B L T F A C K S. Davy Pugs was back last night. Yes. When we recorded this. Oh, yes. yes. Pugs was back last night. How was it? It was good. Yeah, it was nice. Mm-hmm. It was a good time. Saying Talal was on. Uh, you know what? I want to just say something. Talal Jomar came on. He did the open spot last night. He was brilliant. I love Talal. Really, really good. Really, really slick jokes. And mm-hmm. uh, if he just could gigs a bit more, he'll be great. Yeah. I was saying yeah. I've never seen him do stand up, but I, 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 as well. I only hear good things. He's gigged at every single PB's at the Moy. Oh really? So he's from the Moy, yeah. And he yeah. loves it. And everybody, uh, uh, the audience, love him. Talal Jomar, look him up online. And if how many f- people listen to this? Too many. Everybody go follow him just for a laugh. That would be fucking class if he just exploded. Yeah, uh-huh. we'll get him. We'll get him on. And maybe get him on the live episode or mm. something. He like did that. a joke. Like he's great. Lovely guy. And it made me really, really, it really creased me. And I was nearly going to say it there, but I realised that's so sly. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> it's a very funny joke. And he's great, so yeah, yeah, really enjoyed having him on. Paddy was headlining, Butler, Darren Matthews was on as well. Um, it sounds like that's actually a rule rather than two people, the Butler and Darren Matthews. Um, but they were they were good. And I always serving acts. up jokes. Yeah, that's but a lot of acts. Yeah, too many acts. So were you uh, on too? And I was yeah, supposed to be. On. I was on too, and I think yeah. I did forty minutes up the top. So it was yeah, it was a, it was a long time. You have taken your rival in Kieran and Woodsy. 
Yeah. He I'll started he, he started to really overrun. You mm-hmm. know what? Um that is my fault. I didn't hit the wee You know whose fault it actually is? I would take the blame for this. Cassio. But no. It's a butler. Because he told me that you hit this and you rethink, and then if I don't hit it, I don't even look at the words. I just look at the time and do. Why didn't you hit it? Because I'm stupid. I just right. forgot, you know, when I was up. And it was the case if I'm not going until the room's nice and warm for other people. So I just, at the start, it was like crickets, and then I had to get them going. Are you, and then go- it was are you good with set times? Time in your yeah, set? Yeah, yeah, I try to be almost exact. Now, I don't have like a, a five minute set, a 10 minute set, 20, 30, ah, yeah, or whatever. Yeah. I just, I just when I tell a joke and I know my time is almost up or just about up if I get a big laugh or something I'm just like that'll do me I'm straight off like last night I was booked to do 20 to 30 minutes I did 29 minutes and 46 seconds where were you last night? Um, Portside Inn North Belfast near the docks was it good? first ever gig in there yeah it was lovely yeah uh, Willie T pulled out the night before so I was drafted in last minute pardon? <laughs> did he do the gig? no <laughs> 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 nice. Oh, I know where that is. Yeah. East Belfast. No, North, North Belfast. Belfast. <laughs> you don't know where it is. <laughs> <laughs> Spell embarrassing? No. <laughs> uh, let's go for L U N C H. Oh, I want to split the, the listeners in Northern Ireland. What's he going to say at the end there? <laughs> oh. H, because this is the thing. No, I mean, I always go H. You know what? It is H. I'm not making a statement. I've just always gone H. I'm backing you on that because you know what? If you look up the letter H in the dictionary, it's spelled A I T C H. I wouldn't have got that right. I wouldn't have got that right. I've had an argument with people before. I would have thought it was just H. Because people are like, well, it's how it's pronounced. It's H because it's H. I've got, yeah, is R, RAR? No, fuck off, it's H. Sorry. My mum's a Catholic. Don't come at me. (laughs) (laughs) Fuck's sake. You send that to her? Yeah. Don't come at me. Yeah, don't come at me, mommy. Pat, with a rolling pin? Yeah. Oh, no. Because I think she used to beat me with a rolling pin now. <laughs> what? She's jumping up your <laughs> Correct. That's what I was insinuating. And I like it. It's a wee tiny rolling pin, is it? <laughs> no, it's no. the big one. <laughs> it's a baker's legit. <laughs> yeah, she's down there. Like, I think, like, like, and I'm, oh, no, mommy. She's Dennis Taylor, you know, fucking right down there. Oh, wouldn't touch the sides. No, no, it comes out of my mouth, that. <laughs> it's a straight route. It's like a fucking West Link. Uh, anyway, the West Link. Let's uh, wrap uh, up and go for Din Dins. All right, okay. Uh, cheers to Dave Elliott, Sean Hegarty, Patreon.com slash TV Podcast. Have a great week, everybody. TheSheanTall.com. Uh, my tour starts... What was that? The Shane Todd. Why is it the Shane like the guy the top boy? No. The Shane Todd. The apostrophe Shane Todd. It's my new brand. <laughs> By the way, the Shane spelled D U S H A N. Australia, um, April and May, um, all the UK and Ireland stuff, and then hopefully announcing America stuff later in the year. All my tour dates. In fact, Australia isn't on my website. Oh, no. Just go to the shoes <laughs> cheers are we allowed to plug anything though yes callumbass.com uh. <laughs> <laughs>